And I'd like to get this meeting started. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting for August 21st, 2013. Unless there's any change in the agenda, we'll just start at the beginning, which would be the August 27th council meeting agenda. Anything on page one? Closed session Sorry. starting at 9.30, hopeful, probable? Yes. Uh, probable. Okay. It's, uh, I think right now it's a very, it's few items, I won't say it's light. <laughs> okay. Anything else on page one? Page two or three? Page four or five? Page six or seven. Page eight or nine. Page 10 or 11. Item 5.1, the Sycamore Terrace Project. That's to be dropped. Is there a probable date, or how is it going to return, or what's? I don't believe we have a date. Staff's doing additional analysis on the project. Yeah, I, I guess it's at least 30 days. Okay, can I just be re-noticed. Uh, Sycamore Terrace project oh. down on Almaden, 5.1. Uh, anything else on 10 or 11? I have some requests for additions. Uh, pre presentation accommodation in NorCal Tennis Academy. Actions related to Councilor Constance travel to Lake Tahoe, Olympic Valley for LAFCO, and Vice Mayor and Winds travel to Sioux One. Motion to approve the agenda with the additions. Second. Second. Motion to approve the agenda with the additions. Mr. Wall, do you want to speak? Thank you, sir. Item 3.4. You'll note that there are several categories of um, various classific reclassification of um, city employee positions. Um, this should also be linked to item 7.1, which is the Telstar contract. You'll notice in there it's for, I think, $1,670,000 uh, for support people. I've uh, discussed the issue of reclassifying just about everybody at Water Pollution Control Plant. But the instrument text should have been included in this batch. It obviously shows another indicator of substandard and or incompetent management of the administration not to notice this and to take care of this because the instrument texts are, are very integral to that plant not upsetting and causing a spill. So you sh you're, you're walking on thin ice with hot feet on this one. Item 4.1. Agreement with the downtown, San Jose Downtown Association for 390000 bucks. There should be some algorithm to tie into uh, how many vacant storefronts that are down there with the amount of money that we're paying these people. I think this is a, a, an entitlement program that needs to be revised and revised downward. I'd say revised downward to zero, especially with their foray into uh, county politics. There has to be consequences here. People aren't doing much. They shouldn't be paid. It's business with Telstar, Mr. Mayor. This is another entitlement program that the taxpayers are getting bent over a log on this one. Shouldn't happen. Prudent people that know how to run a water pollution control plant would have had these instrument techs already reclassified. Why they're not, that's for your personal discovery uh, as why they're not doing so. Thank you, sir. That concludes public testimony on this item. We have a motion to approve the agenda. If the changes on that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unopposed? That's approved. A September 3rd meeting, not a regular scheduled meeting, but we do have the review upcoming study session agendas for the third. That's a service restoration of revenues measure study session, relatively short list of things, but it'll be a lengthy discussion, I think. Anything uh, to discuss on that agenda? The Priority setting discussion ordinance kind of things we're, we're still anticipating September doing 10th. September 10th yes. uh, September count, regular 10th. council meeting. Okay. Anything else on this uh, agenda? Mayor. Yes. Please. And so st staff's going to be fully. This, this works on schedule. Obviously, you've proposed it, but it's going to be rich. 
Yes. And content. Yes. Oh, okay. you mean the uh, referring to the meeting on the third, correct? Yes. Yes. That uh, is in the works in terms of a staff report. Also, we hope to have a first next week. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Well, you want to speak on this item? Under item three, potential revenue measures, I would suggest that you really consider uh, parcel tax reformulation. That way you could start identifying what groups that you could bundle as a group at no real added cost to the taxpayers. It's true, there will be some cost, but remember measure E when it was done years ago for the libraries to start out at 10 bucks? But if you did it for every living unit, high, high density living, places, if they had 300 units, each unit would pay into this uh, fee, this bundle, and you could start to move certain segments of uh, city operations off the general fund with dedicated funds, and also to encourage our finance department to do uh, the creative investing they did with the plan income fund. Uh, these folks make money if they're let alone, and I think that uh, part of this aspect of looking at revenue is going into uh, annuity-based hirings and also paying down your, your retirement costs. Thank you. That concludes the public testimony. Mayor. You need a motion, I guess? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. And then a question. Second. Right, we have a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, okay. City Attorney, since uh, uh, the resident raises this question and my t assumption is he will also be at that meeting, could staff be prepared to answer that question about reformulating parcel taxes to manage Sure, that, manage can, be, that fee? can be part of the conversation. Okay, so, I mean, thank you. I think there's gonna be various revenue measures discussed and whether they're general or special taxes and what it takes. Right, what legal requirements, thank yeah. you. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none opposed, it's approved. Legislative update, state or federal? We have nothing unless we had a question for Betsy. Meeting schedules, September 3rd, we just talked about. Anything from the public record the committee would like to pull for discussion? I have some requests to speak on the public record. Martha O'Connell. Martha O'Connell, Senior Commissioner, speaking in support of a, of a letter from the Senior Commission, and I let my two colleagues speak specifically to the letter. I'd like to say, as someone who uses public transportation 99.9% .9 of the time, I really don't think it's... Um, government's business to make it uh, difficult for people to utilize their vehicles. I think it's extremely good that people use public transportation, but I don't think the way to get them to do it is to tell somebody that moves into an apartment that they don't have a parking space. Because what this means when we had the presentation from the housing, if you move in six months after the place is open, you might not have a place to park, period then you're put on a waiting list, which could be six months, a year, you don't know how long you're going to go without a parking place. And if you move in the first month, you can buy more than one parking place. So this is a disaster. And I asked repeatedly about the ADA, and to tell you the truth, I don't know what they said, because I never got a clear answer on what if you have someone who needs this parking space close to their residence pursuant to the ADA, the answer was, totally unclear. So I ask you when you're considering this to take that out of the housing plan because it's fraught with unintended consequences. David Wall. I concur with the uh, previous speaker uh, that unbundling parking is just a developer uh, entitlement program to make more money where they should be providing car parks. Item C, Applegate Johnson Incorporated Investigation Update. What does housing know about the Las Plumas, uh, 1608 Las Plumas Avenue? So far, Mr. Mayor, this is how it works. Years ago, the housing department, using re uh, redevelopment money, redevelopment money given to them, spent $3.3 million, transferred it to general services for this property. And they bought it as is. In other words, a city department buying another city department. Okay, well, this happened using redevelopment money. So they get in there and they figure they can't use it for a homeless shelter. So housing then uh, hires a private appraiser. That person comes back and says the property is worth four and a half million. They put it out on the market. They got a couple of takers, but apparently the takers didn't fit under the defini definitions of a government code section. I don't have it here, but it, it's in documents. 
So, you know, Environmental Services Department came in and bought this property for four and a half million dollars. So housing made like, I think, 1.2 million and change off this transaction. From my perspective, it looks like a variation of a Ponzi scheme, a shell game. Because they bought it as is. Both of them were doing environmental remediation for asbestos removal, uh, uh, lead-based paint, and all that other business. Applegate Johnson got in there. In part of their RFP, they didn't say anything about asbestos. The city didn't make them do anything about it, you know, as far as their RFP. So that was an addendum, I think, Mr. Mayor, that went to TPAC uh, years ago. So I'll have to get that document. But Mr. Mayor, then we get the finance department. Remember that $18 million pile, pile of money they made? <laughs> Great job off of the plant income fund using bonds. And that's where e the ESD people got their money to get the Sorry, your time is up. Richard McCoy. Richard McCoy, Senior Commission. Uh, again, I wanted to echo the uh, uh, letter that we sent to the uh, Mayor and City Council regarding uh, the uh, position of unbundled parking policy contained in the transportation demand management measure that may have negative and unfair impact on seniors and the disabled. If you are moving into one of these apartments and you don't have a parking spot and you have a car, what are you going to do with it? You're going to put it out in the street? It's probably going to get tagged and maybe towed away. Or you get on a waiting list and you may end up with a parking spot on the other side of the complex. And if you're a senior who has difficulty getting around, it's going to be very difficult to get to your spot. And with most departments, uh, we have a man and a woman living and maybe children. You have more than one vehicle. So there's going to be problems where you park the extra vehicles. So again, I want to emphasize that the Senior Commission therefore brings to the attention of the Mayor and the City Council that the, this unbundled parking policy is adopted in its present uh, way that it has some unintended consequences that may outweigh what it's trying to achieve with that. And I'm suggesting we look at this in detail and perhaps have it removed from the current uh, plan. Thank you. Joyce Rabour. Senior Citizens Commission speaking against the unbundled policy which has been proposed on this gorgeous day in August in San Jose. Think for a minute about February. It's raining, it's windy, it's very cold and you have to go to a medical apartment and you're an older person. You have to walk to your car. Now, that might seem easy, but if you have trouble walking, if you are perhaps using a walker or maybe even a wheelchair but you're still driving, you might think twice about where you're living. I'd like to, maybe they'd like to move to another place, but because of their limited income, uh, it's going to be very tough for them to do that. They need help from the city in housing. Um, I really urge the city council to reconsider, uh, to urging the transportation department to reconsider this policy and give a significant number of bundled parking spots on the premises of the person's apartment or very, very near to it. Thank you. That concludes public testimony on the public record. Councilor Constant. I just wanted to ask a question about this bundled parking. When, when are we expecting to see this at the council? I'm actually not aware of uh, how that uh, discussion has proceeded, so I need to do some background. If, if you could let us know. I think this is something that does deserve attention. I know in my district, we're very, um, we have a heavy percentage of multifamily apartment buildings, and they were all built at a time when we didn't pay attention to parking. and on a daily basis, I have problems and constituent issues with people who don't use the parking because it's not convenient. They park throughout the neighborhoods and it has uh, a lot of issues in my district. So I'd like us to, I'd like to know where it is so that I can be a little more involved in the process. And, Very good. Uh, get, I think we need to get some broader community input, especially from districts that have areas that have high concentrations of multifamily housing so we can look at the impacts. So I guess that'd be a motion to note and file with that one referral. Right. Motion is to refer that item to the staff, uh, re re note and file the rest. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, none opposed, that's approved.
Boards, Commission, and Committees, we have nothing to discuss today, so we'll talk about the um, items in Category G. We have two special event requests, Motion a safe teen Second. driving video contest in District 10 at Ethiopian flag raising. Motion is to approve both of those items as special events. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. They're approved. Third item, G, is a request to direct staff to explore the budget and policy considerations providing full-time employees with one calendar month of paid parental leave. Uh, Vice Mayor Wynn, that's uh, in part your memo. Would you like to speak to it? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so Councilmember Don Rocha and I authored a memo requesting the city to explore policy and budget considerations of paid parental leave. Currently, the city of San Jose offers a voluntary benefit to opt into long-term disability insurance, what we call the standard insurance. Now, this applies to a list of disabilities, including pregnancy, but it does not apply to male parents or female partners in a, in a same-sex relationship. So what we are asking for is a paid benefit to all full-time City of San Jose employees, male and female, for time off during and after a pregnancy or adoption. The City of San Jose is always trying to compete for better talent from cities, from, from employees from all different sectors. If a paid parental leave is an incentive for a prime candidate to work for the city, then both the worker and the city will benefit. But the greatest benefit of all um, is obviously for the child. Uh, when a family unit works as a team, the best interests of the child become a shared responsibility and the outcome becomes a shared success. We're hoping that uh, obviously this will help the child to eventually become a valuable contribution to our society in many generations to come. And as a, a, a young mother and a wife, I was fortunate enough to have a husband as an equal partner in a shared responsibility of caring for a daughter. And uh, I'd like to see if the city will have, will present that opportunities for uh, young families, especially for young parents. So we have done some research in regards to um, different private companies that offer paid uh, paternity and, and, and maternity leave. Uh, some of the companies that we looked at uh, included Google, which offers seven weeks um, after birth for a father and 18 weeks uh, for a mother uh, after the mother gives birth. Um, Yahoo, Microsoft, and also Cal State East Bay also offer similar benefits for both uh, the mother and the father. And so we're hoping with these uh, recommendations that uh, we implore staff to look at various budget and policy considerations and bring this back uh, either to the rules committee or through the uh, priority setting session so that the full council would have an opportunity to weigh in on, on this recommendation. Staff, anything be, you wanted to? Sure, answer? on behalf of staff, be happy to uh, have our HR department take a look at this and report back. Um, I, in our memo, we asked for the uh, for this to come back prior to February uh, 2014, but um, if it comes up before that, before the end of the year, um, I would really appreciate that. Very good. We'll have staff take a look at it and, and should have no problem. And then it will come back to, to the rules committee. If that's uh, what you'd like to have happen, certainly. Um, well, if it doesn't have to come back to the rules committee, I would like. Uh, for this issue to go to the full council so that my colleagues have an opportunity to weigh in and then we can just sort of bypass the rules committee since we have an opportunity to discuss it here today. Well, there, there are two questions that I have, obvious questions, what's it going to cost? Mm -hmm. And I assume it's subject to meet and confer with our 11 bargaining units, some who might like this, some who might not, you never know. So we've got all of those uh, procedural issues as well as uh, budget issues. If it's a, merely a question of budget, then uh, if we have the information by February, we'd have it ahead of the budget uh, decision-making uh, uh, process because ultimately that's the, the council's decision. So I would assume that Alex Gers is here, but I don't think we need to get a report on the, the meet and confer elements of this. I don't think there's any doubt that it's a meet and confer item, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Councilor Constant? Yeah, someone with five kids, I... I think I have a little bit of experience in this area. Um, and I took six weeks off minimum for each of my kids, including the year I was campaigning. And I just stopped campaigning six weeks before the election because we had a baby. Um, but I have serious concerns about the impact of a policy like this. I can tell you that our city um, 
I, I know the vice mayor mentioned that we don't give paternal time off, but we do. Um, uh, we administer the Family Leave Act, both the state and the federal versions, on an equal basis for male and female employees. Uh, one of my very best friends has adopted four children and took advantage of the Family Leave Act each time he adopted a child for the bonding period. So uh, we do already do that. This is a very expensive benefit that's being proposed here. Um, until we have a city where our libraries are open, the number of hours they were before, until we have restored police services to the level they were before, I don't think we should be considering any items that have significant price tags. Um, our employees get a number of days off each year. Um, we have certain categories of leave that are entitled to be rolled over, such as vacation time, comp time, sick time, all of which are available to the employee when they go through the family um, leave uh, procedures, either under the state or the federal guidelines. So uh, any employee who's been here more than a year has a significant amount of time available in their banks for these type of planned events. And I think it's important to understand that most times they're planned, or at least you know about them eight months ahead of time, and uh, you have time to plan for your budgetary needs. And like I say, I know I, I made the financial sacrifice when I took the time off for my children, and I know others who have done it. Uh, we have a framework for people to get the time off, be guaranteed the time off to spend that family bonding time. I don't think uh, with our budget and particularly our service levels in the city, it's an appropriate time for us to be talking about expanding these type of benefits. I have some requests to speak from the public. We'll take that now. Martha O'Connell. Uh, this is very difficult. Um, I handled the first case as a union steward at San Jose State for a man who was requesting leave. This was in the early 80s, and I tell you, he went through hell and he was mocked, the idea that he would want to stay home with his child. So I have real divided feelings on this issue because I'm, it, I think <laughs> it, anything needs to be totally equal. I'm interested in the portion of your letter that talks about the insurance company that offers the, the coverage only to the female, if there's some way that we, you, you could get an insurance company that offered it to both parties, and also in same-sex marriages, obviously, uh, or same-sex relationships. Uh, my concern is with the budget. I, uh, it's, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time off, uh, it's pretty disruptive for somebody to take a month off. Uh, as I, I was, I asked before I came to this meeting, I asked a city employee, and he told me that currently people can use sick and vacation to stay home with a child. So uh, if that's true, that might be another option. So at this point, as a citizen, I'm neither for or against it. Uh, I think it needs a lot of study and reflection. Adele Cruz. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I, there we go. Hmm, not quite. There. Anyway, I would like to, um, again, say thank you. And I represent uh, four C's of Santa Clara County. And we are always um, for children and for families. So whatever the decision is by the council and by the committee, we urge you to think about the children and think about the families. And thank you for pushing forward with your HR department and at least exploring this. We appreciate that on behalf of all of the children and families of Santa Clara County. Thank you. David Wall. I think the best thing that you could do for employees is restore their pay and benefits with interest. But this also is very compassionate for, for people. But I, I was looking at the language because it's confusing. It says, one calendar month of paid parental leave before, during, and after. Does that mean three separate one months, or is it one, one month total? Okay, one month total. Um, 
I think as you reassess benefits and restoration uh, of uh, pay to employees, that this should be included, along with the Echo Pass. Let's not forget that in our green vision. But uh, yeah, I initially thought this was three months, but if it's only one month, that seems very reasonable. I'm very much attuned to the, uh, the uses of sick time and vacation time for a variety of reasons, not related to kids. But that is a, that's been used for years in a proven method. Previous speaker mentioned about these long-term disability insurance packages. I think that should be emphasized and um, investigated. In my own personal opinion on this, kids should be born at 18 years old. <laughs> that way you can throw them in prison or hang them when they act up. Thank you. That concludes public testimony. So, Mr. Ryan, one, one more question is, you know, I, Almost every one of these type of memos that come through here, we haven't come back to rules, and I'm not really in favor of just saying do the research and send it to council for action. Um, I think that when we get the information, um, we should have the discussion on whether it goes to priority setting session, whether it goes to budget, or whether it goes to council. And I think we need to treat all memos um, equally. I would uh, agree with that in, in part. I just w let's have staff come back and tell us what the the cost of the meet and confer and all the implications are, and then w w we can decide if it goes to, you know, a, a committee or priority session, or if it's just really a budget message uh, item, uh, which it, it could be any of those. We just don't have enough information right now to make that decision, so we'll just have us come back so we can send it wherever it needs to go. Do I need to make a motion for that, Matt? To make a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll, make, a, I'll make that motion. All right, we'll refer this to staff, bring it back once you figure it out. Uh, but getting it done prior to February 2014, I think, is important in the, in the budget cycle so we don't uh, miss the budget cycle if the council wants to make the decision. Do you, need a on, yeah, yes. do you didn't get a second on the motion. I, w I would consider a second if I could speak to that. Yep, okay, we got a second. You want to so, speak? Yeah, so thank you. So I uh, really appreciate the conversation on paid leave. I think it's, uh, it's a policy question and has been talked about. It's... Uh, depends on what that benefit's worth. And um, I think it's good to have uh, information from other companies, um, which I notice happen to be the most successful companies in the planet. So they have a lot of margin to provide incredible benefits. So I think, you know, in staff analysis, we have to look at other companies that are big, like an Applied Materials, which is a billion dollar company, but makes nowhere near the money of Google. Um, so I think that's important in analysis and to see what might be offered at uh, you know the UC system, the CSU system, other cities. I think it's a valid uh, thing to go look at. I think it will be uh, somewhat complex to to cost this out because you're sort of I mean you're having to survey your workforce, um, see who and all has had children or adopted, and then what's your prediction of the future, and what are the you know number of people in each job classification whether it be a, a certain bargaining unit or another based on average salary. So I think it will be interesting. I'm glad the memo contemplates um, a, a fair amount of time to, to garner that data. And, and, and certainly the value has been spoken to uh, by the vice mayor in, in the memo uh, of the bonding between uh, uh, these life events. And these life events are very critical and very important. Um, however, if we're looking at this, I think we need to look at the totality and other life events which have severe, uh, serious impact on individuals is when it comes to severe illness. Severe illness that oftentimes leads to death, whether it be cancer or some other major ailment. So, uh, and in those cases, it's a ma massive emotional and financial burden for those people having to leave the workforce to take care of this uh, immediate family member, whether it be their spouse or partner, whether it be a, a mother or father, a child. And I think if we're gonna look at paid leave, then let's look at it for not just those who choose to have children or choose to adopt, but for those that where almost everyone has to deal with a severe illness that could lead to death. Because I think if we're looking at providing policy to allow uh, these types of things and, and the compassion, then I think we need to consider these other uh, serious uh, major life forces. So I would ask if the motion could be amended to also include uh, looking at paid leave for those situations which I described. Yeah, I, I can certainly include that. I, I think that's uh, that's very relevant. Uh, I think obviously 
at some point we all gonna encounter um, those life events. Uh, so I, I would be more than happy to include that. Um, but I guess I'm a little confused well, I'm a little confused in terms of when staff comes back, um, would they, will you bundle everything together or would you separate? That's a good question. Let me ask um, uh, Alex Kurza perhaps to join us and, and uh, give a perspective on how best to approach this. I would note that uh, as uh, council members have been discussing the scope, it does appear to, to mushroom a bit. And as such, I want to be sensitive to the capacity and the time frame under which that analysis and report could be prepared. Good afternoon, Alex Scurza, Deputy City Manager. Um, if the committee does add uh, paid leave for things like major illnesses, um, I have to give this a little bit of thought, but, but we probably would analyze that separately in the same memo, but probably separately, uh, because I think as, as was discussed, we'd have to make some assumptions uh, in, in it, and they may be different assumptions in terms of uh, the number of uh, children and, and adoptions versus um, uh, major life events like an illness. So we, we, we might study it separately within the same memo. Okay. All right, so we amended the motion yep, to, to include that. All right, that's okay with the seconder, obviously. Uh, Councilor Constant. I would just say that we uh, keep in mind that we built a pension system based on assumptions and we beat every worst case scenario. And, um, you know, I would be much more likely to support a discussion about how we take all of our leaves that we give our employees and changing them to personal time off, PTO, that can be uh, banked and used for a variety of reasons um, than to keep adding on. I mean, we do have to keep in mind out of a, out of a calendar year, there's, uh, well, most calendar years have 365 days. Most employees get 104 weekend days off and then about 40 other days off and then a chance for another 30 days off. You're talking about over half a year off of work. And I think that we need to be looking at these things in the grander scope of things. And again, reiterating, we have a lot of restoration to do in services and pay before we start um, leading ourselves down other paths. All right, we have a motion on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? One opposed, Councilor Constant motion to pass this on a 3-1 vote. Our next item is regarding Assembly Bill 443, carried by Lowenthal on delinquent parking and traffic violations to close the loophole so that we get paid what we're supposed to get paid when the title is transferred. Did Betsy Shotwell? Very good. Excellent summary. The, uh, the legislation I do want to also report uh, was just recently signed by the governor since this was written. We use the expedited bill process for this measure as we do when we need to take positions when the council's in recess, holidays, what have you. So uh, the governor did sign this into law, um, which is was great news. It passed every house and the committees unanimously as well, I want to add. Uh, so joining me is also uh, Jim Orpal from the Transportation Department. Just a little bit of background as well, Mr. Mayor, members of the Rules Committee. Um, Department of Transportation manages the parking compliance program. We have overall a very good collection rate, about 87%, but we do have problems in certain areas. When we don't get collections, we do send it to the DMV. They place a hold on registration. What does happen, though, to avoid the payment of those citations, people do transfers to family members, friends, and others. This closes a loophole in that tool. It's an effective tool, but this bill makes it, I think, much more effective and it's an important, I think, improvement in that tool. We're very supportive of it uh, and can use that. Uh, I will uh, let the Rules Committee know as well that we are um, in the middle of an NBC story on parking tickets and, and uh, unpaid parking citations. Uh, so we are uh, giving them Public, Public Records Act request information as well as uh, involved in interviews with them. We'll keep the Rules Committee and the Council informed of that as well, but this is an important a closure of a loophole in a tool that the state has available to cities. It's a good thing I paid those parking tickets. Motion to approve? <laughs> Second. What is there to approve? Well, exactly. My recommendation yeah. might be you might want to note and file oh. since okay. this is, file. but this was part of the expedited process, obviously, right. still to bring it forward. Obviously a very successful expedited process <laughs> <laughs> in this case. So we don't need, we'll just note, note and file. Make the motion, make yep. Motion. Motion is note and file on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. That's done. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Wald, I'm sorry, you want to speak on this before we move on? 
First of all, I'd like to thank the Department of Transportation. This is a very well-managed city department, which you can all be proud of. Uh, parking control in itself can be a moneymaker. If you start looking at what Councilmember Constant mentioned earlier about the parking of these multi-family housing developments and how people store their cars routinely, I can speak with authority on this matter with the legacy and Pulte high-density projects in my neighborhood that have caused blight in that arena. This bill that has already been signed into law should be amended. It should be made a lot tougher, including an administrative fee. Because with all these you know, requests from the city to DMV, we're having to spend administrative time. And I think that that should be tacked on to any fine or assessment in addition to the parking regulations. Back to parking control. You can make a lot of money with this and clean up this town and being compliant with that cursed municipal regional storm drain permit that's still looming. And if the state ever wants to start enforcing it, then you'll go down the pathway that I've suggested many times. Thank you. Last item is the open forum. Mr. Wall. Sir. As you very well know, the Environmental Innovation Center scandal is going to be pretty much a good part of the legacy of this council and for councils to come, for that matter. Now, yesterday on the consent calendar, you authorized Habitat for Humanity's draft lease where they get 40 months rent-free at the Innovation Center when and if it becomes operational. Now, part of this budget scenario over there is that you rely on two groups primarily because the Clean Tech Development Centers basically is not coming to pass. So you rely on the Household Hazardous Waste Program and Habitat for Humanity to pay the bills of this cursed albatross known as the Environmental Innovation Center. In documents that were there yesterday for you to read, it shows that if, if Habitat fails, the hazardous waste program will pick up the tab of $400,000 for your obligations that arise under the new market tax credit scheme. Now, I contend that with all the funding transfers that have gone into this project, that this is basically a Ponzi scheme. But above all, I want to ask a question about the Environmental Innovation Center, Qualic B Incorporated. They have meetings, and they I don't know if they're public meetings because they don't list any public comment on their agendas. They're held here at City Hall. Their minutes are contained in a binder in the Environmental Services Department. So this secret society, so to speak, that runs, it's part and parcel of the new market tax credit funding scenario that I warned you against going down that path. And how these people were picked, that Judy Cherko, we got Matt Morley, we got Kristen Clements, and Dan Lopez. How, how, how was that selected? How are these people selected? But anyway, we'll get to the bottom of this. I just want to know if it's a public meeting uh, and because there's no public comment allowed. So I'm not sure who can gain access to this meeting. Sorry, your time is up. City Hall. That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. We're adjourned.